Hi there everyone and welcome back to another MHC chess game by the legend Harry Nelson Pillsbury. His opponent was the American chess master James Hanham, who also fought in the American Civil War. And according to some descriptions, he is known as physically small little man and he is also known as a very nervous person. So... Let's see what happened in this chess game. So this was from the first city chess club tournament from 1893. So this is also a notable interactive chess game. So Pillsbury starts the game with d4. We have d5, e3, and then e6, bishop to d3, knight to f6. So we have call system by Harry Nelson Pillsbury. It looks like the call system, but the move order is little bit more different. So we have a 4 by Pillsbury. So this is like the Stonewall setup. And Pillsbury used this Stonewall many times in his chess games. Bishop to d6, knight to f3, b6, and Pillsbury castled. Hanham also castled. c3, c5, knight to e5, knight is getting in, and queen to c7, knight to d2, activating the knight, knight in. And then rook to f3 by Pillsbury, lifting the rook up, and he is going to use his he is going to use the rook as a very important attacking asset in the king side. So bishop to b7. After lifting the rook by Pillsbury, he swing his rook over rook to h3, moving the same piece again, and you can see that Pillsbury's bishop and his rook is targeting the king, and it looks dangerous. So. In this position, actually white has a very obvious threat. But in this position, Mr. Hanham played a disastrous move, a terrible move to say the least. Well, he played C takes on D4 and this was a terrible move. G6 or H6 should have been considered, actually g6 is little bit more accurate and this is little bit more solid i mean not accurate but little bit more solid because the dark square bishop is still buried on c1 uh, and actually believe it or not but this position is pretty fine for black and black is doing well uh, right now in this position but after bishop to b7 rook to h3 and we have c takes on d4 Maybe Mr. Hanham got a little bit too nervous as a nervous person against Harry Nelson Pillsbury. Maybe he got a little bit too excited. It looks like this is a move of a nervous person. <laughs> well, it is white to move. I mean, uh, I hope you can see the next move for white. What would you do in this position if you had the white pieces? Okay, Greek gift, bishop takes on h7, and after, what else, knight takes on h7, queen to h5, and black is in trouble. So, if defending the knight, let's say knight to f6, then queen to h8, checkmate. So, black is moving the rook, and then Pillsbury captured the knight. After moving the king, e takes on d4, and white is much better. The king's safety has been compromised, queen has been infiltrated, and white can also check the king and grab one more pawn. White is already a pawn up. White can activate the knight, activate the bishop, and slowly torture his opponent. So this, this position favors for white, which is needless to say. And we have f6, but this weakens on g6. Pillsbury checks the king, and after king to f7, he played rook to g3. So, extra defense, uh, defending on g7. So, Pillsbury could check the king and then land on g7, maybe. So, knight to f3, knight to e7, sporting the knight, exchanging the knights, and still knight is landing on g6, which looks very annoying. So, bishop to a6, bishop to d2, a very good move. So, activating the rook. And queen to c4, and Pillsbury is sacrificing his a2 pawn. He played rook to e1 and sacrificing the pawn. 
and you can see that there is a weakness in this position. So basically, if Pillsbury has a forced win in this position, he played knight to h8 after moving the king. Well, uh, let's not forget this. Uh, after checking the king, if rook takes knight, then rook takes on g7. After moving the king, black is getting checkmated. And if king to e8, still black is getting checkmated by force. Checkmate. This is brutal. So, okay. Uh, sacrificing the pawn and then checking the king. So we have king to f8. But in this position, white has a very strong move. And Pillsbury played a very beautiful move. He played queen to g6 and he's threatening checkmate on f7. So we have capturing the knight. Uh, what else? And then queen takes on g7 and basically black is getting checkmated by force. So Fisbury is not interested with the rook. He is more interested to, to checkmate the king and he has seen the force checkmate. He played rook takes on e6, king to d8, capturing the bishop check because there is force checkmate. So if king to b8, queen to b7, uh, queen to c7, sorry. So moving the king, queen to c7, king to e8, uh, and then checking the king again, king to f8, and there is checkmate in one move. Queen to e7 or queen to g7. Pillsbury preferred queen to g7, checkmate. The massacre, the disaster, started at move 11 with c takes on d4 by Mr. Hanham. This was a disastrous move. So I know that the quality of the play is not like Carlsen Nakamura level, but actually I really do like these historical chess games because actually you can learn so much by watching these historical chess games, especially if you are an improving lower rated chess player, you are going to get some important ideas by watching these mistakes because you are never going to see a mistake like this by a modern chess grandmaster, I mean, a top 10, a top 100 or top 200 chess players of today is never going to make a mistake like this. Never, not in a, not in a million years. It is never going to happen. Uh, but it happened in this chess game so that you can learn and you can get some important ideas and lessons by watching these chess games. And it is going to be so much more beneficial uh, for your chess understanding. Uh, uh, and for your tactical knowledge. So this is why uh, I like historical chess games so much. Uh, I think these chess games, even this chess game, is so much more interactive than the chess games of Magnus Carlsen or Nakamura or most of the chess grandmasters chess games of today. So this is why these chess games are so interactive and valuable for the improving low rated chess players and they're also aesthetically beautiful and fun fun to watch so okay eh, but eh, i said that the quality of the play was very low but that's not because of his very that's because of the mistakes of james hanham so this was a disastrous mistake and after this eh, he basically lost the game very quickly so let's eh, go to the final position so basically black is getting checkmated, queen to g7, checkmate. So thank you so much for watching. Uh, I have few more very interactive chess games of Harry Nelson Pillsbury to show you. So stick around and thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you next time. Take care and bye bye.